So we're going to do a, uh, I want to show you a real fast clip from our podcast that we'll, we'll, we'll be showing you, uh, it'll show up tomorrow. And then we're going to have a little bit of time to talk about one thing that didn't get on the podcast, Diane and I, and then we're going to let the Lord pull that all together. And he's, he's advancing the kingdom in his spirit and with his word. And his word is growing in such intensity if we will but give time for it to have entrance. When the entrance of the word comes, it brings the light. Hallelujah. So take a moment, watch this, and then we'll get going from there. Welcome to That I May Know Him with Steve Dittmar. I'm your host, Diana Anderson. Yeah, I think the scripture and, and the honesty, to, geez, to be honest, like we reading, I'm going, Lord, that, I, I, I don't know how that will ever be, but, I, but you said it will be, so I submit to the truth that you are able to perform what you promised, and I want that to happen, but I can't go and help you by my effort, but I have to receive. We're going to try anyway. Yeah, I know, we're going to try. <laughs> we're gonna, it's, it's a returning, isn't it, every it, day? Yeah. To that Father heart of God. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, what you're saying in here, in, in the, again, in the intro, we have fully entered into Jeremiah and the love effort of the Father to call back a backslidden nation that believes it's doing nothing wrong. Over and over again, we see the goodness, the long-suffering, and the forbearance of God um, displayed to a nation bent on idolatry. What is idolatry? It's, I'm going to do it my way. If I read it the first time, I go, okay, I got it. I'm going to try it. But if I read it the hundredth time, I go... I've tried it so many times, I know I can't do that, but, but nevertheless, I now I yield to you. Holy Spirit, help me. Um, I can, I, it, it's like, I can turn the shower on, but I'm not going to get clean looking at it. Yeah. I'm not going to get clean describing it. I'm not going to get clean talking about it. Yep. I could get on YouTube yep. and yep. I could teach about yep. the yep. shower and how it cleanses, but I'm not going to get clean unless I step in. Yep. And yep. the minute I step in, it's the water that washes me. Yep. It's the word that yep. Yep. sanctifies yep. 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 me. Now, yep. and, and worse, we can get in the shower and not turn the water on and wonder <laughs> why we have not, we are the same we were when we got in. Right. <laughs> right. So that, that's, Every day, by opening the scripture and just reading from where we are, just just listening and childlike faith and, okay, uh, I accept what I'm hearing, but I don't know what that means, or mm -hmm. I'm just letting the water wash over me. There's a moment. There's that connection. That's why we, we, we encounter him. Right. And when I encounter him, that's when the water that's just splashing all around mm -hmm turns into a spoken word, a rhema mm. word. And that's what that's when all of a sudden there's some just exchange taking place. Oh, I I, I behold I'm beholding you. Mm. And now in my beholding you, I see myself. Mm. I see myself in my state of my own flesh, mm. but I also see myself inside of you. Inside of glory. Yeah. And I'm going, <laughs> I choose glory. <laughs> yeah, I choose glory. Amen. 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 Well, week 12. Week 12. And we're doing this as a chance to bring a couple important things that we didn't already record. Tomorrow morning, week 12 goes on YouTube. And if you haven't yet got uh, into uh, getting the subscription, all you got to do is go online, sign up for our newsletters, and it'll come in your inbox. You can click it and take you right there. But um, praise God. There is, uh, we, we did this, we did this because we decided after we took all the time to write and edit and put together this last year's journey through the Bible now to do every year, that if we open up a conversation, then we might just, you know, continue to increase the capacity. Right. So, right. Yeah. Because so, it, what, what's in the guide is the invitation. So if you haven't picked this up yet, you can get them in the back and people online, you can get them on Amazon.com. Just search Steve Dittmar, it'll come up. And um, 
you know, he, he took each portion of scripture we're going to be in, and, he, and he's given a summary to kind of just like a taster to invite us in. And as we were putting it together, it's like there's so much more than this. So this kind of leads you. It's like, look for this, and maybe you'll see this, and maybe you'll find this. But then we, as we started talking, we're like, oh, wow, and we, get, we keep having more discoveries. So like he said, and I'm going to say it 15 times because you may think you hear it and you'll leave and it will float out of your brain with everything else that comes in. Every Monday morning at 6 a.m., this podcast gets released on our YouTube channel. If you haven't yet subscribed to The Secret Place, you can go to jubileechurch.org and you'll see where it says subscribe and put your name in and your email there. And so you'll get on Monday mornings the blog that says that I may know him. And at the top, it's just one little sentence and it says podcast. And you can click on that and it will take you to our recording of these podcasts that we've been doing for 11 weeks. Tomorrow it'll be 12. Um, if for some reason you're like, I, I can't get there, I can't get there, just go to YouTube and search, and this is kind of long, which is why going through the, um, the blog is easier. But if you go to YouTube and you type in, that I may know him, Steve Dittmar. I'm glad you want to know Steve Dittmar, but we're talking about Jesus. But um, type in, that I may know him, Steve Dittmar, and the podcasts will come up. If you click on his little circular picture, and then you'll see the word subscribe. Hit subscribe, and every Monday morning... Um, when it releases, oh, and the bell. You got to click the bell. The bell. You got to so click the bell. The, look yeah. for the bell. If you don't know where the bell is, ask your grandchildren. Yeah. Look for the bell. Click the bell because then on Monday mornings, it will just automatically um, show up in a notification on your phone. And then you can click on it and it'll bring you to this. And if you have any trouble finding that, pray Holy Spirit. We'll lead you. It'll be great. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, and one other th cool thing. Last year when we hit Jeremiah, which we just started two days ago, I felt in my spirit, because I've been reading it since 2019, over and over and over again, to write a, a second blog that went along with Jeremiah as we went each week through it. There's 10 weeks it takes us to read through Jeremiah. And during that, I just titled it Jer uh, Jeremiah and America, because there was so many similarities. And so we've republished we've re, uh, that. It's all available, just, it's on our website. And I wish I could say that we were closer away from where Jeremiah was, where Israel was headed, but we're still rushing head, headlong into uh, portions of denial. Uh, but if you read Jeremiah and don't discount Jeremiah as somebody who couldn't be speaking to my little heart, you be, it is amazing. It's a love story. It is God continually saying, Israel, you're my covenant people, but you've chosen idolatry over me. And for me, idolatry, and this is God's language, is adultery because we're married. And now I need you to return to me. And you say, well, we, we, there's no way we need to return. And uh, one, just one, I think it's chapter six or seven. It will be this coming week. We'll read through it. He says, uh, of the, he told a Jeremiah, uh, go stand in the front of the temple at the gate when they come in. And then I want you to speak to the people in the temple. And then he said through Jeremiah, you say, the temple, the temple, the temple, the temple. There's always some uh, means to give them privilege and protection because, again, from the north was an army called uh, the Chaldeans, Babylon was on its way, though it hadn't even left post, but it was inevitable coming. And they were saying, well, no, we're, we're, in a, we're in a good place. And then he said, but you go and live a different life than what I taught you to live. And then you say, well, we have the temple so we can free to live that life. So it's, a, it's like a reckoning book. I mean, it's, Jeremiah was God's marriage counselor. A therapist, not for himself. He knew who he was. He was doing it for his people he loved more than anything. So he constantly has to say, these things are coming. 
then he'll reintroduce. But if you return to me, then they won't come, and something better than I even planned will come to you instead. And every single event of Israel's journey of some 40 plus years is, is that same example. Even to, the, even to the day they finally end up in Egypt. <laughs> and he's saying, okay, we'll take good care of you if you just know, put me back, number one. And by that time, their hearts are so hardened and so unwilling. They said, no, no, when we used to make cakes for the queen of heaven, life was good. So we're going back to cakes for the queen of heaven. It's oftentimes the discipline of the Lord is the difficulty of life. And until we call upon him in a humbled heart, we may not understand that he's trying to gain our attention to gain, to return us in a wholehearted worship. So I love Jeremiah. I don't love the book, but I love the heart of God who said, I, I, you're my covenant people and we're married. And that means exclusivity. I'm a jealous God. We read that today, this week, didn't we? I'm a jealous God. My name is jealous. And it's not, a, it's not used anywhere else as referred to man's je jealousy. It's just a particular about God's possessiveness once he apprehends us. So looking forward to staying in that. And uh, I don't make any predictions about America. I just try to allow the Holy Spirit to operate, to convict us ourselves, because it's only one heart at a time that has to return. And I return with my heart, and I'm, I'm back in it. I, the fear of God hit me again just on Friday when I read the first chapter I, and got about five chapters in. So you're doing the podcast right now. Am I doing the podcast yeah, right now? Are. Yeah, I am. Be talking later. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. So I'm going to say this one thing about John, and then I want to let you uh, continue on. Well, that's what we were going to talk about, so keep going. All right. But John, we're going to be in John this week, and it's crazy because John is telling us about Jesus's, starting from John 8, he has to start in John 9. It's all inside the temple, and it's all inside of trying to bring Israel to the reality that he is the son, and he's been sent by God. And uh, he's just going to keep pressing further in, and it's going to be amazing when he starts saying, I'm the good shepherd. Lay down, I lay down my life. My father loves me because I lay down my life. I want you to come in. I want you to hear my voice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to start over. So everything he gave you on Jeremiah is what we were going to talk about as part of the podcast. But once you're up here and you're out there, it's like, oh, I got to tell all of you. That's so, true. So we're going to, I'm, I'm going to reset us and, and hold on to that because I'm going to go back into Jeremiah with you and some more of John. But we're going to run this like a podcast. Okay. okay. That's hard to do. <laughs> That's like, you know, having a conversation with, you know, someone while the rest of the crowd. Well, everyone's watching. Everybody's in the living room. All right. Go for it. So... Okay, top of the morning to you. Top of the Happy St. Patrick's today. Yeah. And yes, as you were just talking about, and also we've in the podcast that's getting released tomorrow morning, we visited some of these things, but we didn't get deep into Jeremiah. You were just talking about Jeremiah as the marriage counselor for Israel. Can you um, kind of unpack that a little more? Sure. He's reluctant. He's been told by God, I'm going to send you, and you have to tell people some hard truths. Mm -hmm. And they probably won't listen, but I'm going to keep sending you. And he gets, everybody gets mad at him. They throw so him in dungeons. To be a prophet, and, eh? Yeah, he's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, in chapter five, um, he's talking about. Um, Israel and Judah are both saying, it's not the Lord speaking through Jeremiah, and that evil will not come, nor the sword or the famine. And we're heading into a time right now where the election cycle is amping up again. We're going to hear a lot of voices in this season. And just, can you just speak to us again about where that place where we lose God's voice happens? 
for us, inside of us? What, what are the things that come and that start knocking us off our place and the importance of coming back in? Well, I, I think for me, I get, everybody wants to hear good news. Everybody wants to be told everything is wonderful. So Jeremiah was in a predicament. He had, for one prophet of God, he had gazillion prophets in Israel. Mm -hmm. And they had these conflicting words. In fact, Jeremiah, in the beginning of this story, says, God, you're deceiving the people. Because all the, you're, everybody's saying Jeremiah peace. said that? Said that to God. He said, everybody's saying peace, peace, peace. And God said, but I didn't send them. They sent themselves. So any prophet, any believer can prophesy out of what we want. And sometimes we don't prophet, prophesy out of what God's wanting to say. And so sometimes the correction is, has to be re brought forth. And that's just really hard to, hard to hear and hard to share. Mm. <laughs> so when, so, so. When that's coming and that correction is coming, what's going to help me know the difference? Well, first off, God doesn't flatter. He, he doesn't affirm us in our sinful practices. He loves us. He'll convict us. Mm -hmm. He's always wants more, not more in the sense of that wasn't enough. You didn't serve me. It, but, but more of... I am the totality of life, mm -hmm. and you will only know life to totally by coming to me. Mm -hmm. So I want that part of you that's in fear or angst. I want that part of you that's not uh, giving me time. Like, mm -hmm. like this. I mean, to read the Bible is, you would think sometimes it's like a punishment. Go read your Bible. And it's, I get up in the morning and I go, Lord, I'm going to find out how I'm doing today in just a few minutes after I read. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> because I can conform. I can say. Okay, say that again. You oh, didn't, you didn't, know you didn't say, I'm not going to find out how you're doing, Lord. No, I'm going to find out how I'm doing after I read your Bible. Because when I read, when I'm, when I'm learning an immersion in that shower idea, we're inside truth. Everything right now is we're inside time and space. And it's not eternal, it's temporary. And it is defining much of who we think we are. But if I step inside of here, there's a reality, there's a truth that is contrasting. Mm. And I begin to go, wow, you really, I see patterns, I see, I hear the Lord's voice, he speaks. And then, then I'm, I'm, and it's, you have to make that decision too. You have to kind of go, Lord, what you're saying is true. It's in the book. If it got in the book, it's true. I, nothing else. There's no other book on the, in the planet. It is this authority or life. So if it's in this book, it's true. So as I read, I'm going to enter into the words. I'm going to let the images, the imagination, my image maker come alive and picture it. And then before you know it, emotion starts submitting and joy starts coming. And it's so, I, I do, I find out how I'm going to be. Mm, that's so beautiful. Can you, I want to, oh, so many um, incredible scriptures this week. I want to move on over to John um, from Jeremiah. And I want you to, could you please bridge for us? the heart of Jesus for these people as he's getting ready to leave because here's Jeremiah standing there seeing judgment coming. Yeah. And now here's the son of God going, yeah, judgment is coming again, but it's coming on me. Yeah. yeah. And so how is he, that voice of the Lord coming through John, um, if you want to bridge that for me? Sure. I mean, we're going to, we will, we will read this week. Jesus having to face the listen to the Father's voice over his own sentiment and emotions mm -hmm. over his friend Lazarus. Mm -hmm. He has to he has to say uh, the sickness is not unto death, and then delay his arrival and uh, and Lazarus die. He's going to face the two dear friends Martha and Mary who are going to accuse him of had you been here this wouldn't have happened. 
he's going to go into deep intercession. He literally groans. Mm -hmm. And then he says before them all, Father, I'm glad you hear me. But I'm only praying this because I know you always hear me. It's for their sake. Right. Then he commands Lazarus out, which triggers his death sentence. Because by this time, the Sanhedrin saying, you know, we've got to eliminate this man. Otherwise, Rome is going to take away our nation. And he's... I, I, I just want to say, I get the Pharisees. <laughs> so I do too. I, I am one of them. These are my people. Yeah. <laughs> I see them in the word and I'm like, dude, I mean, I, I probably would have left my donkey in the pit on a Sunday. Yeah. Of, in my effort to, to do what's right, to get it right before God, I, I don't know that, you know, and not everyone I know struggles in that way, but I tend to struggle towards the religious line. Sure. Personally, yeah, yeah. my personality, I tend to struggle towards the religious line. So I'm learning in this reading, in this pass through, I keep getting hit in this humility place where I see them. And in the past, I would have been like, oh, yeah, those guys. And I'm like, oh, man, God, no. every yeah. time I've been there. Yeah. yeah. Anytime I'm doing that now. Where I'm pointing the finger, oh. and I'm and I'm I'm trying to. Well, uh, I'm I'm trying to get it right on my own. I'm trying to get it right by my flesh. I'm trying to resource myself again. And so I read the Pharisees, and every now and then the Holy Spirit's like, "Hey, yeah, yeah." I'm like, "Oh, okay. Here's my heart again. Yeah, yeah. Show me where I'm I'm trying to do you right, right, instead of receive you." Yeah, and then where that fear is that's keeping me from fully just expecting you're going to be there for me and care for me mm. in whatever moment you ask me to step into. Mm. So I hedge my bet. Mm. Like, like Jesus, with kind of as an epilogue, like a mini epilogue before the upper room, chapter 12. They kind of talk, kind of like a wrap-up, though he did many miracles. But yeah. He said there were a lot of Pharisees that believed, a lot of the rulers believed, but they wouldn't confess him openly because they love the praises of men more than God. And I go and I go, well, where do I love the praises of men more than God? What, what opinion matters? So it's, that's why I do think the word became flesh so we could see what would be invisible right before us and have those moments and go, Lord, that's, that's me and I don't know how I would ever not be afraid. So how would I not be afraid? How, how can you become so much in me that, and the, it opens questions and the Lord begins to address the things that have to be addressed, like he's going to when he, I mean, this week we'll get to go through chapter 13, which is the uh, this upper room, supper, last supper, then 14, 15, and 16, which are the journey from Mount Zion, upper room, upper part of Jerusalem, down to the Kindred Valley. And Jesus is walking with them and talking to them and telling kingdom secrets. I mean, that, that chapter 14, 15, and 16 are kingdom secrets of resurrection life. Mm. And Next book. Yeah, but it's, it's ours to, it's, you see, it's here. Nobody, it's just, it starts, I remember, it just starts to, Lord, Father, talk to me while I read your book. Please, Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. read over the scripture until I hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I'm just going to submit. We've been hearing a lot about that. Yield, submit, surrender. This is truth. Everything else that we see that isn't this is a lie. It may be as real as reality gets, right. but it's still a lie. Right. Right. This is truth. Jesus says, following week, week 13, Father, keep them from the evil one. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Jesus did what he did because he was submitted to the word of God to, in the Father and allowed the word of God to hold him when everything was trying to take him out. And that's what we experience every single day. At least I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Multiple times during the day. Yeah, holding me in. And, and his praying, 
so the, those kingdom secrets, at that same time, he's praying for them. Yeah. He's praying over them. He's, he's asking the Father to, to be there with them, to keep them in this place until the Spirit comes yeah. because he knows what's coming for them. He knows the wave that's going to overtake them as he gives his life, and nobody gets it. Exactly. Yeah, and from chapter 13 to chapter 17, 16, he's un, uh, really just like giving away all that's coming. Mm -hmm. But then, like you said, chapter 17, he prays. Right. So he speaks, he declares, he decrees, lets people know what's happening, but then he goes and says, I got to intercede for them. Mm. So it's a beautiful imagery, and what we just sang about today was that he's up there now interceding for us. But what's he interceding? This, to be formed in us, to be seen in us, to be fully uh, everything. Jesus is, knows it. He is the answer to all promise. Second Corinthians says, Paul said, hey, every promise is yes and amen in Christ. To the glory of God through us. So all prayer has been answered in Jesus Christ. But not all prayer has been fulfilled in our space where we're living. And that is the, the conflict and if I look too long at what I see, I'll start to doubt what I've heard. Mm. And if I look to what I... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Right? He drops these bombs each week, and we're like, oh, and then we move on. It's like, wait, 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 come back. If I look too long at what I see, I will doubt what I've heard. Yeah. I need you to sit there for a minute, please. Well, when we give God that access point, we just pre and it's just it is a discipline it's not easy to start with but it becomes rewarding very quickly i'll hear god whisper i'll hear scriptures kind of come alive it's a it's the reason we highlight our bible that's for me and if i ponder with him he'll support it in in that quiet place in the secret place god is the most affirming voice we'll ever hear concerning who we are in Jesus Christ yeah. and what God has done for us in Christ. So in that time, it's, it's, it's super effective. And many times we'll make decisions. I'm going to live this way. I'm going to put more time here. I'm going to, oh, I, I'm hearing you lead me over. But then we go out into the day, the reality, and that may, and most often will at first oppose what we've heard. So right, it's going to challenge. It's it. challenged. It's like, and so we then try to, we think, well, I just heard something wonderful. So this awful has to go. Well, and, and that's what Satan did. Did God say? Yeah. Right. So that's that challenge is from the beginning. That challenge yeah. is always going to be there when the word comes. But, but I used to pray <laughs> to try to change things that I saw that were contradictory to what God wanted to do. So I was not realize I was putting, I was making a, I'm looking at everybody again, sorry. You can, you can look at everybody. You just was, started preaching, I'm like, wait, we had a podcast. Okay, never <laughs> mind, keep preaching. <laughs> I make, I, what, what happens is you, you're, you're trying to displace darkness. All it needs is light. Ooh, say to, that one again. <laughs> well, you, could you imagine going into your dark house and saying, darkness in the name of Jesus, go! Just turn the light on. Mm. The same thing as the scripture. So I would f fight, fight things to try to get them to move. So you're trying to conform them to the word. Right. Rather than letting the word conform you. Yeah, and what about you can enjoy the scripture as though they've already happened. Hmm. So you, we can, we become uh, our mindset on the things above. We have a promise that when he appears, we will appear, we will be with him in glory and likeness. So yeah, it's, 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 it's Jesus Christ taking preeminence mm. in my mind, in my thoughts, in my fears, in my concerns, so that I'm not, I'm not trying to produce heaven. I'm receiving. I'm yielding to heaven. That's a mic drop right there. Yeah. So that's receiving, not producing. I'm, I, I'm just kind of capturing all that you've said in this. So when I hear, if I look too long at what I see, then 
I'll doubt what I hear. I'm going to doubt what I hear because I'm going to start making what I see true. Yeah. What, so this real and true thing. God's been talking to me a lot about the difference between real and true. And so I'll look at what I see as real. Absolutely. And I'll begin to think that that's true. And so that's where I drop the word. Yeah. And Rather than going, wait, no, no, no. Yeah. What's been said is true. Right. And, and I get to live over here while this is still happening. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not trying to, yeah, you're not trying to change that. Your, your, your truth is supersedes reality even if reality is stubborn and won't move. Mm -hmm. It supersedes. Jesus Christ is Lord. Period. Period. And he's raised from the dead and he's seated. You know, so, but if the whole scripture immerses us mm -hmm. and then God has the freedom with the Holy Spirit to say, Let, here's what I know I want to, revealed to you of myself in my son. All scripture brings us to Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment of all scripture. He was the word made flesh. He is the word in heaven. So next thing you know, it's like, he's always looking for, why don't we go? So my, our time with him in the word, it allows us to have experiences with God in the word that we may or may not carry into the day we're about to face. But because we had the experience, it's becoming a testimony of, our, of, of who Jesus is. And that testimony will grow up because the word is called seed and it sows and it will bear fruit eventually. Hmm. But, the, but again, if I'm looking at my, my, my problems, the weeds that are growing up, right. I, I start going, well, maybe he didn't say that. Maybe he... But all you got to do is get back into the place where you were, inside scripture, in the spirit, and he'll come back and affirm what he said. Because he's, he's totally into his word. So how do I hold that? Now I'm walking into my day, and it's happening to me. Right? My right, day right, is right, happening right, right, to right, me. Right, right. The, the things that I don't, the things that this word said in opposition to that are still going on. Sure. How do I, you know, let's talk about Timothy. Let's talk about how Paul was instructing Timothy as he's discipling him, mentoring him into yeah. kind of a pastoral apostolic role. He gave Timothy some, some keys of how to hold that, how to war with his word, how to, yeah. you know, when you're taking what God said and then you're stepping into the opposite of that. Sure. How do I manage that? Well, how do I, I steward that? Timothy, we'll start this on Monday. We'll start with the whole idea of God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I don't think there's a parent here who hasn't taught their child that at some point, or you're, we've taught it ourselves. Then he goes on, he says, and you were in Christ before time began with a purpose, and you were saved and called. So those are like, Massive truths. You mean I was known in Christ before time began and I was given salvation in Christ and a calling, purpose? And then he goes on and says to Timothy, he says, and I'm confident that what I commit to God, he's able to keep until the day. So if I have to go through prison, suffer at this moment, it's not going to be what defines me or stops me. Because God's going to do what he said in me. So it's, it's practical. But the thing about, I believe, I, I think a, a divine connection with God once a day that's, that takes as long as it takes to have it will carry you through the day mm. to a, where you can refer back to it. But we've all had those moments three, week, three, you know, three days ago, oh, this beautiful truth, mm -hmm. but now it's, it's kind of dissipating. Mm. How... Why would God make manna that was like croissants, but the next morning it stank with worms crawling in it? That make me kind of think like, were the worms there? Hello, were the worms there the day before? Right, right. <laughs> like in my apple or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's it was a training. Forty years they had to learn that God, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm. And so the life, the buoyancy, the sense of heaven, 
the sense of awareness, it follows you into the day. It helps confront the stubborn reality that wants to say it'll never change. You'll always be in the same place. Mm. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bridge on over to Exodus and Leviticus. Okay. So this week we're going to finish out Exodus. We're going to begin Leviticus. The, um, the end of that has been the establishment of the tabernacle and all the design going in and some of the laws coming in. And now we're going into Leviticus where much of the law, the different offerings mm -hmm. are being taught. Um, in there's 15 different ways we can go in that, but in God establishing the tabernacle before the people in the desert place, it, I'm reminded of it because you, as you started talking about manna, God met them on a, a physical level, an emotional level, Absolutely. and a spiritual level in all the ways he was manifesting himself to say, abide. Yeah. And yeah. I'm bringing that because, you know, John 14 yeah. and 15 and 16 is about abide. And yet here they are in the desert. And he's trying to teach them to abide with him, that he was abiding in their presence. Yes. And here's physical manifestation for how to behold holiness. And, and we don't have those visual cues in the same way. Um, you know, if anything, the church argues about it, like you should have a cross, you shouldn't have a cross, you should have this, no, you shouldn't have that, you know. Some churches yep. took Jesus off the cross and turned him into a dove and put him on the cross, and you know, <laughs> and all of us trying to, what is, what's the right way to look at Jesus right now? So how, how in this abiding is God bringing us to see him? Again, I know it's in the word. How does that become manifested he was teaching timothy war with your words you know how are we bringing god forward to see him in every day well like when they set the tabernacle up mm -hmm. the last chapter of exodus there's then comes the, the fire that sits upon the tabernacle at night mm -hmm. and the cloud by day mm -hmm. and as long as the fire and the cloud were present they all of israel camped around that one place that tabernacle but if the fire moves at night, everybody has to unpack. They have to take down the whole tabernacle and their tents, and they have to go in a procession. And it could have been a mile, it could have been two miles. It could happen in the middle of the day. It might, the, the glory might rest there for a year, or it might be there for one day. One of the ways I think God trains us is he never lets things stay status quo. We're always dependent. It would be likened to that we're being transformed now from glory to glory as by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So that fire manifestation is the Holy Spirit, God's presence in that place of dwelling. And we're having to learn. Because when Pentecost came, the fire put, went, came on our head. But a fire can kind of go dull if we don't go with the fire hmm. let let the let the, you know and that's so so it's it's a that's what i think seeking god is a, a term that god recognized as those who follow me will be seekers of me hmm. so you got to seek his face right but my heart has to say it and then really like we could say right now to everybody all right, for the next five minutes, let's seek God. <laughs> and some of us would go, I know exactly what that means. And they would just, you would just start pressing in, into the spirit, mm -hmm. into the truth, mm -hmm. listening. Some of us would be going, I don't get it. How do I do it? Mm -hmm. but, but everybody, that whole nation that had been slaves for almost 400 years, now we're all of a sudden having to be in an orderly function. They had their tribe and they camped and they had to get up and they had to pack things their way. And, and all of that was part of that learning mm -hmm. to, to go with him and to feel him right. and to see him and, and experience him. So they, he's bringing them out of slavery, right? We, we mentioned, and it blew my mind the day we did the podcast, and you're like, they were basically Egyptians when they left. 
Yeah. Because I don't know why I hadn't thought about this before, but somehow I had always thought of the Hebrews in Egypt post-Moses. I know Moses hadn't come yet and all of that, but I was thinking of them in all their religious practices and all. They didn't have any of that. Yeah, they had right. Abraham's testimony to Isaac, Isaac's testimony to Jacob, Jacob's testimony to his children, yeah. and, and probably from grandfather Isaac as well, and the stories they were telling. But none of that had been set up yet. They didn't yeah. have the law. They didn't have no. any of that portion of but, understanding God. They just had the faith of Father Abraham. And now they've been slaves for 400 years in this Egyptian culture. Yeah. They were Egyptians when they left. Yeah, yeah. Just like when we get saved, we're still of the world. Until right. we, we're not of the world, but we still have all of its thinking. And, and all that deconstructing. And, yeah, yeah. And letting that go. So I'm listening to you, and I'm, I'm seeing this process of God leading them in the desert. They were sons, but they were still slaves. So he was parenting them in that slave mentality out of their slave mentality. But he couldn't just release them into freedom. No. And like, here, you guys go over there and build a hut and go over there and build. Because they were still in slave mentality. They would have lost everything. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, so I need you to follow me. Yeah. Jot yeah. and tittle. Yeah. We're and doing gonna, this. And, uh, we're doing this. We're stopped today. Yeah. We're going to sit. We're going to sit. We're going to sit some more. Yeah. And we're, we're going to practice the Sabbath. That was crazy. Um, <laughs> No matter what, you're going to sit and nobody's going to work. It, it was, yeah, it was God's. But what's different when to hit, that's what Jesus has to, the Holy Spirit has to do with us. Right. And, and he wasn't like blaming them for being slaves. He's like, I've got to take you where you are yeah. and move you to by degrees to where I am. Right. So I've got to lead you right now as slaves until you can cross over in your mindset to that place of seeing, oh, he's God, he's holy, yeah. he's, he's, he's with us, he's, I want to follow, I want, so, but in their mentality, they're like, okay, we got to do this, and, you know, manna stinks, and we're tired oh, of yeah, that, yeah. And, and, and how do I do that so often? When God is asking me to follow him, and I just want freedom, I just want to be free, and he's like, Wax on, wax off. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to wax the car anymore. I don't want to paint the fence. When am I going to possess my word? Right. And he's like, I am working that word yeah. inside of you right now. Yeah. But if I let you run, you're going to run in your ego. You're going to run in your brokenness. You're going to step out of what this promise has for you because yeah. you don't yet know how to possess it. Yeah. I'm training you how to possess your promise. Yeah. And if you hear, listen, as we get, when we get into numbers and they start to advance, mm -hmm. Israel's complaint gets more and more negative mm -hmm. to the end when they're refusing to enter in the promised land. They said, you took us out of a land flowing with milk and honey and brought us out here to kill us. And I don't know about you, but I feel that way about God all the time. I mean, I'm, I, my, my soul, it gets so connected into this conflict and that I'm going, this, 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 something, something's wrong, something went wrong, something's wrong. I, and, and the Lord was just, and I, I got saved and I was so excited about salvation. I figured that excitement would last me a lifetime. And by the time I read the Bible the first time, I got to Exodus, and we got out of the, through the Red Sea, and three days later, they are complaining because there's no water. I said to, the, to myself, I think, I'm sure God heard, I can't believe these idiots. How could you, having gone through a miracle like the Red Sea, now doubt God's going to care for you and get you water three days later? Oh. <laughs> It's true, because we read this. And you think you're going to carry and, it. And, this, we, and I think I can do this. You can't. I think I can do this. And I, I think it was like two weeks ago I had the revelation when we were in this. I'm like, oh, you know, I've always thought God gave us the word so we wouldn't repeat it. And now I'm like, oh, wait, he gave us the word to show us we're gonna. Yeah, help us understand <laughs> the way back. If you, I mean, Old Testament, New Testament, 
over and over again, we have to be brought back. Yeah. Because we're, we're living out this walk in the flesh. Yeah. This isn't God, and he chose it that way. Yeah. He didn't make us all spirits. Yeah. We're all humans yeah. in a body. With My ego is still with me. It's yeah. getting sanctified yeah. daily, and it's getting sanctified in the Word, but it's still there. And I'm still trying to, I think, I beat Satan at his game rather than yielding to righteousness. Yeah. Yielding in the midst of conflict, trouble, my telling you not to talk to them, talk to me, because that's how we planned it. And I'm like, oh, dear God, who cares? (laughs) That's why you're, that's, you do well. That's why you're the host. (laughs) But no, but it's like, I'm, I'm in this to, this is like a kindness. If I'll look at it and go, here's the human condition with and without God. And I'm one of them. Keep yeah. bringing me back. Yeah. In your mercy. Yeah. In your mercy, bring me back, Lord. In your mercy, I will do this. I will, I will be Peter. I will go lop off somebody's ear trying to protect God. Yeah. I will. I will. Yeah. This isn't there so I won't. Yeah. This is here to show me, guess what you will probably do. Yeah. Yeah. But God. Yeah. You know, like Jesus said, but Peter, take courage. I've prayed for you. Yeah. I already knew. Yeah. And God's already knowing I'm going to drop his word. Yeah. I'm going to drop my promises. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try to perform them like we started yeah. talking about. I'm going to try to make it happen. I'm going to try to make the word of God happen rather than holding it with him in the spirit yeah. in that secret place in worship yeah. and saying, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do this. I see in part, yeah. but I'm with you. Yes. And then a little bit in my surprise. All of it was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Mm. And this man is our mediator, our high priest, who sits next to the Father. And any time I can see that in Jesus Christ, Mm -hmm. not just the possibility of being like him, but the promise of conformity and Mm. transformation will be mine. And then I can eliminate a huge learning uh, repeat by saying, well, I will just thank you, Father, for what you accomplished in your son Jesus in this moment. My healing, my joy, my peace, whatever is against. And then that's where that abiding Mm -hmm. becomes the place of dwelling in Christ. And his words start rising up and returning to us again and again. And it's the whole Bible is to take us to Jesus. The whole Bible is Jesus. Mm-hmm. The whole Bible is summed up in this one word, this given to a flesh boy. Before conceived in the womb, he was called Jesus. This was something that opened the door for us to now enter into this same resurrection union with the same struggles. Mm. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just... Glad we could do this, and I, I want you to finish this up, and I'm going to sit down. No, you can sit here, <laughs> oh, <laughs> please, because we're, we're done. Um, last week, and this is the last point I want to make, um, you know, you said that Jesus learned who he was by reading the word, by knowing the word. Mm-hmm. The word taught the word that he was the word. Yeah, is that which, crazy? Take that one home and camp on that for a couple of months. But Jesus learned who he was by being in the word. Yeah. So that's what we're to do. No, it, it, it is. It is. We learn who we are yeah. by being in the word, by seeing him, by recognizing he's the one who has made us righteous. He yeah. is the one who is equipping us. He is the one. So we get to discover ourselves as we watch him discover himself. Correct. Yeah. And I, I really believe we're going to, this is going to, well, it's two things are going to happen. One is it's going to be a great acceleration of the revelation of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. coming into his church. And the other is there's going to be great darkness embraced as the lie is chosen over the truth. So it's going to get, uh, it, uh, we, we will be entering into experiences with God 
in Christ that everybody up into our generation hoped and longed to come into. Mm. The angels peer and long to find out about this salvation. The holy people that prophesied inquired, is this about us? And they said, no, it's about him mm. and it's coming. So this acceleration and dawning of the day and the morning star rising in our heart is going to happen. But at the same time, people are going to be turning away and saying, I don't believe any of this. It doesn't do me any good. And having asked Jesus into my heart and being filled with the Spirit and speaking in tongues and even having a life of prayer is not enough without truth, having a way to say, here's who I am, here's what's happening, here's what I want from you, here's how you follow me in this moment. And frankly, you can't, so just submit and surrender and Declare I did it and let it be done. <laughs> Amen. Well, would you pray for us? Because sure. that's how we always wrap up our podcast. Um, that as we step into week 12 this week, tomorrow will be the our podcast for this week will go live. And uh, again, could you pray that as we begin to encounter you in the word, there comes this new place of humility and awakening. I'm feeling those two words mm -hmm. on it, a humility to enter in and an awakening into things we hadn't seen yeah, before. I agree. Okay. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this um, moment, and we do pray that your spirit would hover over every one of us and quicken us or beckon us into your word so that the word of God would become for what it is to be the living truth that allows us to come into an encounter with Jesus Christ and submit to the truth in Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you that you paid for it all. You walked it out. You proved it out. And now all we are to do is walk in you, and with you. And so we humble ourselves. Give us, a, give us a, just the childlikeness that we believe again. When we read something, it would go, well, that's what you said, and this is what it is, and let it be. And give us a, a hunger. And Lord, you, uh, and for, forgive us. We you know, eat on too much junk food and processed stuff. We don't want processed word. Mm -hmm. We want to learn to digest the very living word of ourselves with the Spirit of God's help. So... However it is in your mind, as the people that have accepted your son grow up into the likeness of your son with the living word and with the Holy Spirit, would you awaken that within us? Would you help us to wake up in it? Would you cause resurrection to come to us? And would Jesus give us light, illuminate our darkness with the light of your word? Yes. God. So that we can walk with you into yes, the future God. you've given us in you, in yes, your word, God. in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See you Amen. next week. See you next week. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. See you next week. Okay. Um, everybody, if you would stand and worship team, if you would come up. I just feel there's a moment of impartation right now that the Lord wants to release. So everybody stand. Everyone stand. If you're here in the house, if you're online, you can stand too, as long as you're not in your car. Um, so if, 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 uh, if we would just put our hands in the receiving position. I hear the Lord say that the weapon of this moment is worship. The weapon of this moment is worship because as we exalt him, as we lift him up, just as Pastor was saying, he will address it. He will deal with it. And it is from that heart position that we receive instruction of how to go forward. We are not to go forward in our own understanding. And we cannot stop ourselves from doing that unless we first pause and worship. Until I make him sovereign in the moment, no matter what word I've just received, no matter what I've just seen happen, when I'm triggered to react in that moment, I need to hit my knees. I need to exalt the king first 
until he becomes all of my purview. When I am exalting him, when I am worshiping him first, and I see him first over everything I see going on that I need to address or that I feel compelled to even pray for or take action on, I need to bring myself back into worship, into that place of exalting the king. And so would you pray with me right now? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Starting today. Starting today. In any moment. In any moment. Where I feel compelled to action. Where I feel compelled to action. Would you constrain me? Would you constrain me? To return. To return. And behold the king. And behold the king. And exalt the king. And exalt the king. First. First. Until I am captivated. Until I am captivated. With my king. With my king. Above every circumstance. Above every circumstance. There is where I will hear. There is where I will hear. Your instruction. Your instruction. In that moment. In that moment. Whether it is to yield. Whether it is to yield. Or to go. Or to go. To speak. To speak. To remain silent. To remain silent. Let me exalt you as king. Let me exalt you as king. And now, Lord, I lift my hands. And now, Lord, I lift my hands. To receive a scepter of worship. To receive a scepter of worship. That I will lead, I will lead in, worship, in worship in all of my responses to in you. All of my responses to you. I will follow you first. Follow you first. In worship. In worship. And there I will hear your voice. There I will hear. And there I will respond. There I will respond to your word. To your word. Once you are the king. Once you are the on king. On the throne of my heart. On the throne of my heart. In any circumstance. In any circumstance. So help us, Holy Spirit. So help us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship for a Amen. moment. Thank you, everyone. Amen.